Let's review a little bit about just calculating probabilities and making sure that you've got the basics down here. Uh, what's the probability that I roll a six if I roll a standard six-sided die? And again, you should be thinking, um, well, there's only one six on the die and there are six different sides or things that occur. So that probability is that I have a one in six chance of rolling the six. Did not get it. Okay, what's the probability that I flip tails when I flip a coin? Uh, well, there are two different things that could happen. Tails is one of those two, so it would be one in two chance that I would get tails, and it looks like I did not get that one either. But in this uh, little lesson, we need to focus on probabilities and independent events. And independent events are events that they don't have an impact on each other. They, uh, they're they two separate events that really do not influence each other. And so there's a list of five things that we could talk about, and let's talk about which of the following are independent, which ones do not affect each other. So number one says, you spin a spinner and then you roll a die. So you're going to spin a spinner and then you're going to go over and roll a die. And whatever happens on the spinner does not change anything about when I roll a die. They don't influence each other. So these are called independent events. Those are independent events. Number two. You flip a coin and then you draw a skittle out of a bag, maybe. Well, these are also independent events because flipping a coin will have no impact on the skittle you draw. Number three, you draw two cards, one after another, from a deck of cards. So it says you have a deck of cards in front of you. You're going to draw a card out of the deck. One after another means you're going to hold on to the card and then go and draw another one. Now, these are not independent events because of the card you draw the first time, the first card you draw influences what's left in the deck for you to draw the second time. So these are not independent events because the first card will affect what the deck looks like when you go to draw a second card. These are not independent events. Number four, you draw two cards a card from two different decks and that those are independent events because it's two separate decks it doesn't matter what I draw from the first deck the second deck is still the same 52 cards okay you draw a card replace it and then draw another card now when you replace things and this is going to be a key word in probabilities when you replace things you basically reset back to normal so that the next time you draw it's the same as the first time you drew. So those are independent events. They have no effect. They do not change the outcome the second time. So a couple examples here about probability and independent events. Now we're going to spin this spinner twice. And whatever happens the first time, when I spin this the first time, uh, let's see what we get here. Uh, we get purple. Now I get purple. So when I go to spin the second time, it doesn't matter if what color I got the first time. It doesn't matter that I got purple. When I spin it the second time, it's an independent event. It's just a one in four chance I get colors again. So when we have those kind of events, independent events, and when I'm doing m more than one thing at a time, it's called compound events. Okay. Let's say I want to calculate the probability that I spin the spinner twice and I get green and then green. Now there's a key word there, and, and in probability the word and generally means to multiply and that's going to be a very important factor also. So I want to get green and then green. So independent, the first color does not change what's going to happen the second time I spin. When I have two independent events, really all I need to do is multiply their probabilities. So what's the probability that I get green when I spin the spinner? You should be thinking, well, there's one out of four. And that's true. The first time I spin the spinner, there's a one in four chance that I get green. And I did. Now, the second spin says, what's the probability I get green? It's still one in four because that first spin doesn't change anything. So I spin this a second time. Okay, the probability that I'm going to get green and then green is one fourth. This means times one fourth. They're independent events, so I can simply just multiply. It's basically like the fundamental counting principle. This and then this, I multiply. So the answer here would be a 1 16th, 1 16th chance I get green and green. Let's take flipping a coin, for example. 
I'm going to flip the coin, and we're going to be looking at what's the probability that certain events happen. Now we need to remember, flipping a coin a second time is an independent event because what happened the first time doesn't change anything when I go to flip the coin again. So the probability that I get three heads in a row. So this basically says the probability that I get heads, and then heads, and then heads when I flip it three times in a row. Well, we know that there's a half chance you get heads the first time, a half chance you get the second time, and a half chance you get it the third time, because they're independent. They don't change anything. So it's a half times a half times a half, which is a one-eighth chance that I get three heads in a row. I had three of the same side in a row. And so moving on, let's take a look at a couple of other compound ind independent events. Uh, if I wanted to uh, roll a die and then flip a coin, we know that they're independent because they don't affect each other at all. If I want to roll a six, there's a one in six chance. If I want to flip tails, there's a one in two chance. And I would simply just multiply these, 1 6 times 1 half, which would be 1 12th. If I want the probability, I'm going to get three twos in a row. And now this is assuming I'm rolling a standard six-sided die. There is a 1 in 6 chance I'm going to get a 2, a 1 in 6 chance I'm going to get a 2, a 1 in 6 chance I'm going to get a 2. So the probability that that would occur, three twos in a row, is going to be 1 out of 216. So as you can see, the main idea here with compound events, multiple events, when they are independent and they don't affect each other, is we're simply multiplying their probabilities. Okay, just to wrap this up here, we'll take a look at a couple last questions where we kind of uh, combine these. This says I'm going to get, I want to get a heads, and then I'm going to roll the die and I want to get a one, and then I'm going to flip the coin and I want to get tails. So this basically says now there's a one in two chance I'm going to get heads, a 1 in 6 chance I'll roll a 1, and a 1 in 2 chance I'll get a tails. So I'm just going to take those numbers and multiply. Again, they're all independent, they don't affect each other, and multiply those, and there's a 1 in 24 chance that I could do that. Lastly, last question, let's throw in this complement idea. Remember this symbol here, that, or it means complement, which means not. So this question is saying, hey, what's the probability that when you roll a die you do not get 3, and then you flip a coin and you get heads. So not three. I know that there are five numbers on the die that are not three. So this is a five and six chance. Getting heads is a one and two chance. So five, six times one and two. We have a five twelfths chance that we have this occur when we roll the die and flip.